Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just got into the rest of the spring overreactions from the Big Ten. Tons to pull away from that conference. A ton of teams that have a lot riding on this year, so wanted to get into that a little bit. But now it's time for a Spotlight Wednesday, and we're going to focus in on the Ole Miss Rebels. There is a ton going into this year. There is a ton riding on this year because as we'll get into throughout this it might be threading a needle for this year. This might be the window for Ole Miss to pull off something incredible, but let's get into kind of some specifics around all of this and kind of what this is going to look like. So we're going to do this the way we always do uh, Spotlight Wednesdays. We'll go to the offense, we'll go to the defense, we'll break down their schedule, and then I'll give you my final thoughts at the very end. But the offense, it goes through that man right there. It goes through Jackson Dart, and it starts and ends with him. Having him as a third-year starter is as big of a deal as there is across the country. Having someone like Trey Harris to catch passes from him is absolutely huge. This wide receiver group is insane. They brought in someone like Juice Wells from South Carolina who can absolutely stretch the field. You have Jordan Watkins already on that group. Caden Priestcorn right there is doing incredible things in the passing attack, so it's going to be one of the best passing attacks in the entire country. I think people are a little bit worried about the running attack, and they honestly shouldn't be, to be totally honest with you. Losing someone like Quinchon Judkins is always going to be tough to replace, but you have Ulysses Bentley, who's been there for quite some time. Henry Parrish came in during the spring portal. You got Logan Diggs earlier in the portal cycle, so you have plenty of talent in that room. Now, the offensive line is where the portal guys really come into play. Uh, that's where... You brought in a ton of guys. You brought in Nate Kalepo and uh, and Ballou from uh, Washington, two guys that are going to be huge players for you. Julius Ballou, excuse me, from Washington, both guys that were big-time players for that Joe Moore award-winning um, offensive line a year ago. So it, they're going to be huge uh, for the Rebels. Also, you have Diego Pounds coming in from UNC, who likely will start at right tackle. So a ton going into this offensive line when you talk about the transfer portal, but they got big time guys. Nate Kalepo is going to be a high round pick. Baloo also probably going to be a draft pick this upcoming year. So tons of talent on that room. But definitely if you're looking for a place that the most rides on uh, in terms of the portal class, it's that offensive line for sure. Um, so overall, this is going to be one of the top teams in the country when it comes to the offensive side of the ball. They have been since Lane Kiffin has got there. They will be until until he leaves, but especially this year when you have someone like Jackson Dart pushing all the buttons, when you have Jordan Watkins, when you have Juice Wells, when you have Trey Harris, Caden Priestcorn, all of these guys out there that can catch passes, and then Henry Parrish, who's great out of the backfield, U Ulysses Bentley, who's great out of the backfield, so it's remarkable what they're going to be able to do. It's remarkable the amount of guys that they're going to have, and this can be a top scoring offense in the country this could be the top scoring offense in the entire country to be honest with you if they're able to play their cards right and really hit that high ceiling so tons of talent on that offensive side of the ball as there always is but the defense is what it comes down to for Ole Miss it's what it's been for the past couple of years where you've come up a little short um, because that defense was just not quite ready to step into that big time spotlight well now they might be much more well-equipped to do that, to be totally honest with you. They have added so many starters and quality depth pieces in the portal. This is where they did the most of their work. And the D-line has become really a strength of this team, where last year it was not necessarily what you would call a strength. It wasn't necessarily terrible by any means, but it was not what they wanted it to be. They brought in Walter Nolan from A&M to go alongside J.J. Pugues, who's been there for quite some time. That's a great duo on the interior of that defensive line that definitely will get push against a number of offensive lines. Now, you still have to give some rotation there, so they're going to need some depth guys to step up, but Walter Nolan's as good as it gets as a defensive tackle in this country, so he's going to be really fun to watch. And then on the edge, Jared Ivey right there, and then Prince Liu Man Mielen coming in from Florida. Two guys that are going to be huge, uh, hugely important on those edges. Sunshine Perkins can absolutely be used in that uh, place there, but I tend to believe he'll find most of his run with the linebacking group that is super athletic and has another big-time transfer in it, and Chris Paul Jr. coming over from Arkansas. This guy's going to start, and he's going to be a probably the most important starter for them at linebacker. You have Car uh, Kahari Coleman, who's a very, very talented player, very athletic. And then Sunshine Perkins is slated to be the backup to Prince Liu Man Mielen. Will definitely be in more of a pass rushing role, but with how athletic this kid is, with how talented this kid is, 
it's going to be nearly impossible to keep him off the field. So I think you will see plenty of him, even if um, Prince Leo Manmielen is on the field. I think you'll still see Sunshine Perkins plenty this uh, fall. I think he's really talented and can be an absolute breakout star for them. And then you look at the back end, and man, they brought in everyone from the portal. <laughs> um, there are at least three starters in the transfer portal that they brought in, and there could be at least four, uh, to be totally honest with you. Trey Amos... Brandon Turnage, Isaiah Hamilton will all start. I feel very confident about that. Key Lawrence absolutely could start as well. So they brought in, in a million guys from the portal from a ton of different places, some SEC schools in the uh, winter cycle and then some different schools. Uh, Isaiah Hamilton coming from Houston in the uh, spring cycle. You also added Yam Banks. So they've done insane amounts of work on that back end. I think that was the area that was probably the worst when you look at that Ole Miss team a year ago. They got torched a lot of the times, to be totally honest with you. And he's brought in enough guys to where it, there's got to be five that work. There's got to be a group of five that fits together perfectly. And uh, it'll be interesting to watch, but I do think they're going to be capable and uh, be able to uh, definitely make some noise as a defense. I think there's tons of ability. There's tons of talent. Obviously, you got to put it together, and that's Pete Golding's job, but it's a really elite group when you look at it from a straight-up talent perspective. It's as good as it gets um, in the country, and uh, will be fascinating to watch if they can keep up with some of these SEC offenses because those are getting better as well. Um, but let's break down their schedule real quick, and it's a very, very interesting one. I think you start with four games that you should absolutely win. With all due respect to Wake Forest, I, I think they're going to be a fine team this year, but if you lose that game, we're having a tough conversation about where Ole Miss is at going into the rest of the year. But then you have three games that I think will really define their season in a lot of ways. When you talk about Kentucky at home is going to be an absolute fight. They're going to have to be fully ready for that, and if they cannot, excuse me, if they cannot go into SEC play on the right foot, it's going to be a tough uphill battle the rest of the way. I think, you know, when you look at the rest of that schedule, it's not going to get much easier, to be totally honest with you. And then you go to South Carolina, a very, very tough environment with a group that is a lot different than it was a year ago. So you don't really have a beat on them, at least not yet. So it'll be interesting to watch how that one unfolds. You got to win that one. You got to be able to go into those environments and walk out with a win and then at LSU is <clears throat> as tough as it gets uh going to Baton Rouge and playing in Death Valley is uh you're never going to walk out with an easy win that's for sure but uh Ole Miss has taken the steps where they should be ready to take on that challenge but it's a huge if if they're able to win that game but if they can uh they have officially gotten fully into the conversation for the conference and maybe have taken the conference by its throat, depending on the way that a couple other teams have done uh, up until that point. But then you get your first bye, so quite a long stretch uh, before their first bye of the year. But then you get into a three-game stretch that's almost equally as important as the one that we just got into. Oklahoma at home is kind of like Kentucky, where it's going to be a really tough battle. It, you should be able to win. You better be ready to go, because this team is going to be able to at least hang around with you. But if you're going to win a title, if you're going to go to the playoff, if you're going to do the things that Ole Miss has always has been talking about them doing this upcoming year for the last couple of months, these are games you have to win. So Oklahoma, it, it's going to have to be a win if they're going to want to do what they want to do. At Arkansas, should be a win unless they pull something out of their hat. But also, going to Arkansas is not an easy thing to do. As you'll find with a lot of these SEC schedules, there's not a week off. Uh, whether you're going somewhere where it's a tough schedule or you're bringing someone in that is just going to be massively improved like Kentucky or Oklahoma, it's just it's going to be a tough uh, scene for sure. But um, then you get Georgia at home, and that's the game. I think everyone understands that. I think everyone in Oxford is circling that game on their calendar for sure because if you win that game, you've kicked the door entirely down. I think everyone understands that. Georgia is the team. Um, the same way... You know, if Texas beats them, they've kicked the door down and they're, you know, fully a part of the SEC and they're ready to take over type of thing. So that's the game that all Ole Miss fans will be, you know, really dialed into, will want to win as bad as any of them on the schedule. But even if you lose that one, I think you can still be in a position to make the SEC championship, depending on how that Georgia uh, Texas game goes. You can still be in a position to make the playoff. You can do a ton of really, really incredible things, even losing that country, uh, even losing that game. But 
if you win that game, you will be the talk of the country. You might be the top team in the country. So it'll be fascinating to watch that one. And then you get your second bye before the final two games. You go at Florida. That's got to be a layup, uh, to be totally honest with you. Florida's going to be a good team. You don't really know what they're going to look like, to be totally honest with you. Uh, At the end of the year, they could have a new coach. They could have... Um, it could be a very interesting situation in Gainesville, I'll put it that way. But that's another game where if you're going to be a playoff team, you got to be able to walk into the swamp and get a win. Uh, now, it doesn't necessarily need to be the prettiest thing in the world, but you need to be able to handle a team like Florida where you outman them in talent, you outman them in experience, you outman them in a lot of the categories that you're going to need to <laughs> to win these games. So I think that's got to be a win. And then Mississippi State respectfully to Mississippi State, if Ole Miss loses that game, the season has gone entirely off the rails. So hopefully, uh, overall, this schedule is doable. It's totally manageable for what Ole Miss is this year. Now, if it was Ole Miss two years ago, you look at the schedule and you say probably like 9-3, and three, uh, something like that, maybe 8-4, and four, depending on how things draw. This team is different, and they've said that you know over and over since the season has ended. So this is where you prove that you're different. You win games like Kentucky at home. You go to LSU and you get a win. You go to Florida, you get a win. You beat Oklahoma at home. You do the things that playoff teams do. So it'll be fascinating to watch if they can step up into that uh, big-time role. But at the end of the day, when you look at this team, there's nothing off the table for Ole Miss. Like, period, end of story. There's nothing that they can't do in 2024. They can win an SEC title. They can, you know beat all the teams on their schedule, including Georgia. They can go to the playoff. They can win a national title if they really do everything perfectly. Now, here comes the big question mark in all of that is, what does that mean? If you can't do that, if all of this stuff doesn't come to fruition, you're not able to reach the lofty goals that you've set out for yourself, was this the only year that you could be able to do it? Because there's going to be tons of guys leaving this program this offseason, whether it's the offensive line or Trey Harris, Caden Priestcorn, uh, Jackson Dart. The defense is going to get gutted with Walter Nolan walking out the door, Prince Leo Man Miel, and all of these guys are going to go on to the NFL. And it's going to be an incredible year for Ole Miss. But the question is, what does 2025 look like? And what does 2026 look like? So if you can capitalize on this year, and you know make it a 11 win year make the playoff you know go 3 and 0 against teams like Kentucky, LSU, Oklahoma you'll make the playoff and if you can do that then you'll get more guys coming in you'll get more recruits you'll get more guys from the transfer portal you'll be able to keep this thing up but if they fall on their face if Lane Kiffin cannot you know reach the lofty goals that have been set for him and his program it could be an interesting time in Ole Miss not that uh Lane Kiffin would be on the hot seat necessarily but there will be this kind of sentiment where everyone will kind of be looking around wondering, did they just miss their only shot uh, to win a title? So it'll be fascinating to watch. I think everything is on the table for this Ole Miss team. There's no question about that. They can do anything that they are they put their mind to, honestly, this, this upcoming year. But they are threading a needle, and uh, they are bringing in a ton of guys that have to hit uh, for them to be t- uh, for them to do the things that they want to do. So it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a very interesting thing to watch, and it'll be a, a testament to this coaching staff. If they're able to pull off everything that uh, their fans really want them to, but it's going to be tough. It's going to be a very, very fascinating thing to watch. I think this team, among the teams that have brought in a massive transfer portal class, is as ready as any of them. When you talk about 2021 Michigan State or 2022 uh, USC, those are some of the teams that brought in tons of guys and were able to have successful seasons, but I think Ole Miss is more equipped to have a big-time season than those two teams, so we'll see if they can do it. Lane Kiffin can kick the uh, door down and become one of the best coaches in the country this year, so it'll be fascinating to watch. I cannot wait for this season for Ole Miss, to be totally honest with you, but we're going to end the show right there. So uh, thank you so much for list- for tuning in to the GSMC College Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show, leave a positive review. It does make a huge difference. Also, uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, all of the f- social pages for content and updates across every sport you could possibly think of. We have incredible people doing work across every single sport. So definitely tune in to GSMC if you need anything in the world of sports. But thank you once again for tuning in, and I will see you guys tomorrow.